Good morning, everyone. This is Lori Delk Radecki with the Nashville Networking Group. We do these every single week um, right here on Zoom live. And we also do them all over Middle Tennessee area in several different cities. And so if you are not on our list and you would like to be, please go to NashvilleNetworkingGroup.com. You can also join our groups on Meetup, LinkedIn, as well as Facebook to find out about our different locations and who's going to be our speaker and what our schedule is and where we're going to be at when we're going to be there. So each week we have a different speaker who talks to us about different tips, tricks, ideas, things that can help us both in our personal as well as our business life to help get us to that next level. After that, we go around the room. Everybody has one minute to give us your name, what you do for a living, and how we can better refer other people to you. So we normally have all different kinds of speakers, and this week, yours truly is the speaker. So I normally don't speak at my the ones that I run, but, um, but I am today. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen, and hopefully uh, you will be able to see everything. And just one moment. Let me. All right, and here we go. All right, hopefully, can you guys, can somebody unmute and just let me know if you see my screen? Okay, perfect. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to go through, I'm going to talk today about personal branding, why you should do it, how it's going to help you, why is it important? So why do personal branding? Like, what in the world does it matter? People talk about that all the time. So effective personal branding will differentiate you from your competition and allow you to build trust with your prospective clients and customers. Branding yourself means developing a unique professional identity and a coherent message that sets you apart from other people and your company or your industry. So most people, you know, work for a company, they're either a distributor, an affiliate, a salesperson for a company, and you have other people that are in your company or at least in your industry that could be kind of like your competition, right? So what sets you apart? Why should somebody sign up with you rather than Joe Schmo that works for your same company that's gonna get the same benefits, but not you. So, and like they say, you never get a chance to make a second chance to get a first impression. So make it one that will set you apart, will help you to build trust and reflect who you truly and uniquely are. So everybody's different. Everybody has different unique traits about them and you have different things that are gonna attract other people to you. So you wanna focus on those and attract your tribe. So personal branding is also your story I don't know why this isn't changing. So one huge thing is, you know, don't get caught sitting in the comfort zone thinking that whatever your company does, because most companies do do promotions as well, but don't think that that's enough. Just like a company's brand helps to communicate their value to their customers, but that's the customers that you as an affiliate or distributor or salesperson has gone out to bring to the company, right? But you brought them. So you want to stand out from the competition and your personal brand does that for the individuals seeking those services or products. It helps to communicate a unique identity and a clear value to your potential customers and clients. So in essence, your personal branding is your story. So how do you get started? So you simply, like Nike says, just do it. Simply get started. Whether you know it or not, 
or you try or not, you already have a personal brand. So when you search for yourself, you know, in this day and economy, almost everyone has a cell phone. And how many of you have actually, you meet somebody, you put in their name and you Google their name to see what pops up, right? How many of you do that for yourself and see what pops up? Because those results are the first impression that people will have of you. So is it a good one? Is the information that you are sharing across LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all the different social media sites, is it consistent? You know, there's certain things like LinkedIn is more business, Facebook is more personal, Instagram obviously is more pictures, TikTok is more videos, but you still want everything that you're sharing to be consistent. Like on Facebook, you might post some business stuff, but you're gonna post more personal stuff too, where LinkedIn is more business, but still it needs to have a consistency about it. When someone goes to search for you and learn more about you and about who you are, are they gonna like what they find? Are they gonna be attracted to what they find? And is your unique personality that's true to you, the raw and real coming out? Because that's what people are gonna follow. Do you want to allow your online reputation to just take a life of its own? Or do you choose to control it, right? Like my best selling book, we all have choices. You have a choice to control what you put out there. And like, you know, a lot of people say, you don't air your dirty laundry. I remember my mom teaching me that and that was way before any social media, right? But it's still in effect today, especially more so today. With social media and the gig economy, it's essential for everyone to embrace personal branding. Your personal brand is unique to you. So Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon said, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So think about it. If you have children, you know, you raise your kids and what the children do and say when mama's not around is what is a reflection of you. So that's the same thing with your social media, with what you do out in networking and your business in person on Zooms, all the above things. And, but what people say about you when you're not in the room, do you wanna hear those good stories come back to you? Or do you wanna hear the things that are not so great? The term branding is used to, used to be reserved for businesses, but with all the social media sites and the gig economy, it's the personal branding has become fundamental, which means it's the base. That's where you start is your personal branding. And one thing also is, you know, most of us love the companies that we represent, but you know, life is life and you never know what might happen. You want to brand you more so than your company because the same thing, you never know what's going to happen and people are going to follow you or sign up with you because of you not because of the company, because they can get the same product or service from the company, from any distributor, affiliate, salesperson, whatever out there. Your personal brand is the unique combination of your skills and your experiences that make you who you are. It's how you literally present yourself to the world. Your personal brand is also your reputation. It's how other people see you. Make sure that it's a reflection of your true nature. If it's not your true self, if you're pretending, it's gonna come out in the wash, as they say. So you need to make sure that you do and be true to yourself. Like one thing I like to say all the time is be raw and real, your true self. Take the time, think about it before you speak or you post. Take the time to think about it. Is this the right choice for me to say or post or do before saying or doing it? 
the same thing. It's a digital economy out there, right? No matter what you do, it's probably going to be videoed, <laughs> right? So make sure that you're doing proper ethics, you know, all the right stuff behind it. Think about it first. It, doesn't it seem like you won't like have any time to make decisions if you're always thinking about them? But by taking the time to think, you slow down your actions or your reactions. You will be more congruent to who you say that you are in this world. And when you give your heart and your mind to others a chance to process about what's going to happen and the consequences to your choices, good or bad, it's going to be better for you. And you're going to have more good decisions than bad ones if you just take that time to think before you speak, post, or do. So pay attention to how you feel. Like, trust yourself. Trust your inner instincts. You know those times that you have that inner feeling that says, hmm? if I should do this. Listen to that because most of the time, if you think of back on situations, your inner instincts were probably right. So what's the level of trust that you have in yourself? But if you don't have trust in yourself, do you really expect others to trust you? So focus your decisions that you have in your mind and in your heart. Reread what you're about to post when you're going to post it, or you're going to email someone, or you're going to text someone. A lot of times we reply flippantly without really thinking. We're quick. We're in a hurry. We got to get so many things done. So the text comes in, you click and you reply rather than type it out. Don't send it, reread it. And, you know, think about, pray about it before you hit send or that email leave it up overnight, reply to it at night, you know, if you're doing your emails at night, but then don't send it till the morning after you reread it with a fresh look, fresh eyes. When it's wrong for you, a lot of times you're going to feel tense or uneasy, but when it's right for you, you're going to feel happy, relaxed, more sure of yourself. So recognize that you always have a choice to what what to say, what to post, what to respond to. And in the end, do you want to gain and keep business or do you want to lose business, right? If you are not effectively managing your online reputation, then you're going to run the risk of losing out on business. The more people see your name and they associate happy feelings or they receive value from you, this is going to connect them to you more and more. You lose 10% of your influence with people each month when you don't interact with them at all. So you've got social media, you've got email, you've got your newsletters, blog, greeting cards or other things in the mail, gifts. We've got Zoom, FaceTime, in-person meetings. All these things are things that you can use to keep your influence up with others. So don't always just focus on one certain area. Yes, there are certain people that build mainly online on one social media stream, but what happens if your account gets shut down or that media stream goes away? Like there's lots in the past, like, you know, MySpace was a big thing years ago. It's not anymore. Yahoo was a huge thing years ago. Now it's Google and some other ones are even coming out. So you never know what's going to happen. So don't put all your eggs in one basket. Spread your focus across several social media channels, as well as other avenues, such as the written word, in person, the search engines, different things like that. And in the end, be uniquely you. Developing a great personal brand doesn't happen overnight. It's going to take work and it's going to take time. But it's imperative for you to be able to communicate your purpose and your mission to your audience in a genuine way that's unique to you. Don't get caught up in trying to act like someone else or copying how someone else is. 
or how they act or how they behave. Be uniquely you. Richard Branson said, too many companies want their brands to reflect some idealized perfect image of themselves. And as a consequence, their brands acquire no texture, no character, and no public trust. And Richard is a perfect example of personal branding. I've had the blessing to meet him several times in person. He's not afraid to be himself. He's not afraid to be unique. He's not afraid to fit into a mold of how you should act and how you should behave in business. He is very successful. He stays true to his core values and he acts like himself. He doesn't act like anybody else. So you can do it just like a lot of your top popular favorites that you might follow on social media, but it is simply a matter of continually creating and coming up with ideas for your digital presence. And most importantly, keeping it raw and real, true to yourself and to other people. Your honesty, your transparency, your authenticity are what will attract those that you want to follow you and differentiate yourself in the long run. Consistency is going to build trust and credibility with your audience. Keep your tone and your personality the same across all channels, once again, including your website. Use your design elements like your logo, your look, things, key things that set you apart. You know, some of the key things that people know about me is a lot of the times I'm in stilettos. Most of the time I have something hot pink, hot pink shirt, hot pink. Now I have purple nails, but normally hot pink nails, hot pink high heels, right? So think of things that's going to keep you and set you apart and be consistent with those things. Find your unique voice and stay true to it. That's one of the huge keys to creating a powerful and personal brand. All right. And I can't see where my mouse is to... Well, and I'll just tell you, so this thing really quickly, I've been self-employed since 1993. Last year, I was running about five businesses, three to six figures plus, and three nonprofits. And one of my biggest keys to success is also reading personal development books every day. I'm not an avid reader, but I'm not one of those that can curl up with a good book for five hours or whatever, but I put it in my schedule to read a few books a few pages in a book, five to 15 minute increments, two to three times a day. And that averaged me to reading a book a week. And I did that for about 20 years. So add that up, that's about 20,000 books. So when you start personal development, it will start to change your thinking and your mindset is what's important. The way you think about things impacts how you experience it. You'll look at things differently and you'll start to think differently. And personal development is gonna change your attitude. When your attitude's better, you're gonna be able to look at things and accomplish more and better things. You learn to focus on what matters and you start to realize that many things don't matter so much. And you learn to let th those things go and do what you love. So that's a part of another presentation that I ha had in here. So I'm gonna stop right there and try to figure out how to, there it is, my button to stop sharing. All right, so if you are watching us live, then this is the end of our presentation. If you want to be on the rest of our group and see more information about our speakers and network with the other people that we have online, go to NashvilleNetworkingGroup.com. Also, join our groups on Meetup, Facebook, as well as LinkedIn. Thank you so much, everyone.